you're looking for a simple script you can attach to any sprite or UI image to give it a little breathing effect that you can customize really easily, you should continue watching this tutorial. Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly, and today I am going to be showing you how you can do a breathe animation on a 2D image or a 2D sprite in Unity. So let's get right into it. So I've got a canvas and I have a UI image and we're going to make this UI image of a Mewtwo a bit more alive. So, in the Assets folder, we're going to right click, click on Create, and go to C Sharp Script. We're going to call it Pulse. After the script has been created, open it up in Visual Studio. So we're going to make a few global variables. Firstly, we need to do Serialize Field Game Object, Target Object. This is going to be the object that we want to apply the breathing animation to. Serialize field float expand duration equals 1f. This is going to be how long it's going to take to breathe in or to breathe out. So if it takes one second, then it's one second to breathe in and then another one second to breathe out. This is customizable because you want you might want people to breathe at different rates. Private float current time is just used to determine where we are in our breathing. Private floats current time is just going to be used for the breathe in logic. We're going to have two vector frees for breathe in and breathe out. So what size do we want our image to be when we finish breathing in? And what size do we want our image to be when we're breathing out? And you can customize this for different breathing effects. This variable, private ball breathing in equals true. This variable is going to also be used for the breathe in logic. And serialized field ball pulsing equals false. This is going to be a boolean to toggle whether or not we actually want our character to breathe or not. After that, we're going to replace our start function with an awake function. So we're going to do private void awake. If not target object, target object equals this dot game object. Basically, if we haven't assigned a target object in the inspector, we're going to just make the target object the object this script is attached to. And this gives a little bit more versatility because maybe you want the breathing logic to not be on the object that you want to breathe, but you might also want it to. So there's flexibility there for you. In our update function, we're going to just have one line of code. It's going to be pulse update, and this is going to be the breathing logic. We want it to occur every frame the game's running. And we're going to make the pulse logic in a moment, as well as the pulse update function. So don't worry if it's read for now. Next, we need to do private void pulse update. So this is going to be our function, and it's going to not return a value. And it's going to be called pulse update, because this is going to be our logic for our pulse. Inside, we're going to do a simple if statement. We're going to do if pulsing. So we're going to check if pulsing is equal to true. If it is, we're going to do some of our breathing logic. So firstly, we're going to do vector free target scale equals breathing in question mark, breathe in, colon, breathe out, semicolon. And this is an example of a ternary operator. And essentially, it's a way to condense an if statement because we're going to check if breathing in is equal to true or false. If breathing in is equal to true, then we want our target scale to be the vector that's breathe in. If breathing in is equal to false, that means we're going to be breathing out. So we want our target vector to be breathe out. These are the vectors up here that we define in the editor. After that, we're going to do another ternary operator. And we're going to be doing vector free start scale equals breathing in, question mark, breathe out, colon, breathe in. So we're kind of doing the opposite to what we do here. So basically, this tells the computer to pick the starting size. If it's breathing in, it'll pick breathing out to be its starting size. Otherwise, it's going to start from the breathe in vector before it then breathes out. After that, we're going to do current time plus equals time dot delta time. And this is like a stopwatch ticking. Time dot delta time tells how much time has passed since the last tick or frame. The computer adds this time to its total timer, which is current time. After that, we're going to then do float loop factor equals current time slash expand duration. Slash just means divide, by the way. And here, the computer is going to be calculating a fraction. It divides the time passed, which is our current time, by the total time it should take for one phase, which would either be breathing in or breathing out. And we store this time in our expand duration variable. And this fraction helps in knowing how much the image should grow or shrink. 
for each update. Then we're going to do target object dot transform dot local scale equals vector free dot lerp start scale target scale and lerp factor. This line of code is going to be our game changing the size of the object. It smoothly moves from the starting size towards the goal size using the fraction we calculated. So we have a starting point, a destination, and how long we should take to get from our starting point to the destination. The destination being the new breathing status, our starting position being our current breathing status, and the time is how long is it going to take to do a breathe, or a breath, I should say. Then we're going to do, if lerp factor is greater than or equal to 1.0f, this is another condition check. The computer is asking, have I reached or gone past my goal size? The fraction lerp factor being equal to or greater than 1 means yes. So if we're equal to our target size or gone beyond it, we're going to set breathing in to not be equal to breathing in. Basically, if we've just finished breathing in, we want to start breathing out. If we've just finished breathing out, we want to start breathing in. And we also set current time to be equal to zero because we're going to reset our stopwatch because we're about to do a different animation. And that's it for this tutorial. So we're going to save our work and we're going to return to Unity. We're going to go to our image. We're going to drag and drop our pulse script onto it. And we're going to drag and drop our target object into the target object field. This is going to be the image we want to resize. Expand duration will keep at one for now. So what do we want to do for breathing? Well, when we're breathing in, we tend to think of our character moving up a bit and getting a little skinnier. So do 0.98 for the X vector, but 1.02 for the Y vector. Z will keep zero because this is a 2D image. And then when we breathe out, we're going to reduce the Y values. 1.02 because we're increasing our X, but we're lowering the Y. And we need to also tick pulsing, so we got it set to true. But this is a basic breathe animation. Let's hit play. And as you can see, the Mewtwo has a bit more life to it now. It's not a static image. And let's do something a bit more extreme. We'll do 0.95 and set the Y to 1.05 and keep that 1.02 and a 1. Oh, that's getting, that's a heavy breath. That is a heavy breath. But anyway, guys, you can customize this as you see fit. Thanks for being a great audience, be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.